So today's meetup, okay? So, hi, we are starting. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks a lot. Okay, um, hi, thanks for coming for today's event. Okay, uh, on behalf of Joyce and the Best Religious Community, we want to thank all of you. I see a lot of new faces, which is good, okay, because you're interested in UX. Okay, um, yeah, for today's event, we'd like to thank our sponsors first. Okay, one is uh, the co Michelle. Okay, wow. can we give them a round of applause? For sponsoring this venue, if not, we won't have a nice cozy environment here. And also, uh, Sky Drive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so today there's only one speaker. Okay. Basically, it won't be like a I speak and you just listen session. It's going to be interactive. So really, uh, just get ready to just be really active and uh, participate. Okay. Our speaker for today is uh, Sam. So Sam is actually, he used to be one of our participants from the SG Geek Girls or HTML CSS course, but now she has decided to like step up to also share a bit more about her knowledge of UX research. She's currently a UX researcher at uh, Property Guru and also like one of my ex-colleagues and she kind of like got me into the UX scene. So uh, there's really a lot to learn from her. Okay, uh, shall I? Probably. Before we actually start off with uh, Sam's program for today, maybe uh, Chun Xiong might have something to share about SkyDrive first. Okay, so I'll just pass the mic over to Chun Xiong. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Chun Xiong. I'm the technical evangelist for Windows Phone. So uh, SkyDrive is something that uh, I use, but I don't really work on at work. Okay. So uh, to those of you who aren't familiar with SkyDrive, it's a store, online storage uh, file system which allows you to store your pictures, your your uh, documents all into a single location. Okay. So today I'll just take five minutes to talk about SkyDrive. So just three functionalities about uh, storing photos, okay? talking about uh, OCR, op optical character recognition, and the last thing I'll be talking about uh, uh, photo and talk. You know why you come back later. Okay. So uh, moving forward, okay? uh, what I like to do, uh, just share with you, I like to take pictures. Okay. Uh, photography is one of my hobby. Okay. So what I really like about SkyDrive is that uh, I have a Windows phone, definitely. Yeah, I have for my Microsoft or Windows phone. I have a really great camera phone. Okay, change the start. Yeah. Uh, what I like to do is that, uh, what I really love about SkyDrive is that wherever I take a picture, yeah, I'm going to take a picture of the audience now. Okay. Yeah, hi. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I've taken a picture on my phone. Okay. What you will do is that you will auto-synchronize on SkyDrive. So I've set up SkyDrive on my, on my machine. Okay. So let me just close this off. If I go to mouse, 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 mouse. Okay. If I go to my Skype guy, okay. so this is my camera roll. If I do a refresh, I should be able to see uh, the image uh, auto synchronized onto the uh, Skype itself. Okay. okay. Yeah, so it's thinking uh, later we should. Okay, the second thing I really like about SkyDrive is how we organize photos. So uh, remember, I like to take a lot of photos, not just using a camera phone, I like to do film photography as well. Okay, so organizing photos is one of the difficulties we uh, have. Okay, so what SkyDrive does is that uh, what it enables you to do is that it enables you to do geotech, um, show, show the location of where you have taken a picture. So I believe most of the smart we have nowadays will have a geotech in the middle now, right? Okay, what it does is that let's say I've taken some pictures here and there, right? So today I a picture here. What you do is that you show me the location of where this picture are taken. So let's say if you are traveling, you are going overseas, it's very useful. So example, if you want to uh, try to remember location of it, uh, where you have eaten a great food or uh, place where you have taken a really nice picture, okay, this will be very helpful. It will show you where exactly uh, on earth okay, you have taken that picture. Okay. So the third thing I'd like to talk about uh, about SkyDrive is that uh, the OCR hub. Okay. So uh, let's see. Okay, remember, it's back to photography. Okay, let's say uh, I've taken a few pictures previous, uh, before uh, this event started. Okay, uh, so let's say if I, I've taken pictures of name cards. Okay, organizing pictures is, is, is not that easy, right? Okay, what this does is that every time I upload a picture on the SkyDrive, it will do automatic OCR for me. Okay, so let's say, uh, let me try it out. Okay, I'll go and search. Okay, uh, I've taken a picture of the slides of the previous picture, okay, Samantha. So if I search for Samantha, you took a picture of me. I uh, took a picture of the slide. Uh, it's not smart enough to recognize face. Yeah, yeah. It's a man. Uh, it should show the slide that that is belong that belongs to her. Uh, yeah. So these are the 
pictures I've taken has around seven glass. It actually does OCR and recognize that Samantha is part is there. So it allows you to have a very different way of managing your photos in terms of chronological order, in, in terms of geotagging and in terms of OCR. Okay. The last thing I'll speak about, okay, can you try to be yourself? Okay, remember it. So uh, Skydrive is not just about storing pictures, you can store all your information, all your documents as well. The one great thing about Skydrive, okay, and the final thing, is that let's say you are working with your Word documents, your Excel documents, or PowerPoint documents. Okay. I'll open one of them, let me see, something to do with. Okay, so we are having a download. We are having you to download these uh, files on your machine. Okay, sometimes you might be overseas, sometimes you might not have an uh, office installed on the machine. Okay, what it does is that there's an uh, office online. It, it is not as, uh, as sophisticated as the uh, desktop version, but it's good enough. So you can do all your uh, formatting stuff, you can do all the formula stuff right on your web itself, and you'll be able to save all this information. Yeah. So these are some of the things I want to cover about Skyrim in terms of photography, OCR, and office. Yeah. So that's all I have from uh, the Skyrim sponsor. Thanks a lot. Hey everyone, thanks so much for coming. Um, if you want to sit up the front on the floor, I think there's a bit of space. I don't think we anticipated so many people coming today.
once you go into the mall, um, the user interface is basically where the rooms, the escalators, the staircases are. But that's where you put all these things. Um, information architecture is like you know deciding how many floors you have, and how many sections in your website, and then how do you um, arrange all the different kinds of information. Uh, interaction design is um, like what happens when people move around the mall. Like when you open the door, uh, what do they go through? Uh, how painful it is to get from one floor to another, uh, and so on. Um, and then content design. So basically, providing content that is accurate, relevant, uh, most importantly useful uh, and clear. And then user research, which you can do at any time, so understanding what your customer wants. Uh, if you have any questions at any time, just feel free to raise your hand. Okay, so let's do a little activity. Alright? <laughs> Sha. Uh, okay, so, and there are cooks and there are chefs, right? Um, I, I think we can all agree that they're quite different in terms of the, what they produce. So, what kind of personal traits differentiate? A cook and a chef in UX. If you talk about UX practitioner, all right. Shout out your answers. Ego. Ego. <laughs> I'm gonna hit you with the microphone. Come on. What what traits does it take for someone to do good UX? Empathy. Okay. Passion. Passion. Listening skills. You have to let to drink alcohol. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, okay, that's not going to skills, right? Skills can be learned because uh, traits are like innate, right? So keep it coming. Uh, like to drink alcohol. <laughs> Skill, which I actually am currently doing. Okay. Fussy. Why? Because you are very meticulous about every detail yes. you see about that. Okay, so is meticulous a better word? Oh, it's fussy. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> meticulous? <coughs> what else? Come on, UX people. Curious! Curious? Okay. You have to like to use post it notes. <laughs> Adventurous. Adventurous. Shut up, shut up. Be able to keep neutral. Open minded. Okay. The planning, you need to be able to plan. Be able to plan, okay? Focus. Okay. Be a good listener. You can actually write pretty fast you know, so you don't have to slow down. Zen. Who said Zen? Me. Zen, what's Zen? You're able to zone up. Oh, Zen. Zen. Yeah. Zen. Is that like being calm? Or? Just zoning out, being focused, being inside the zone. And just okay. let the thoughts flow. Okay. That's kind of like focus, right? Can I put it next to focus? Or is it similar? Similar? Okay. Anything else?
like to drink alcohol, meticulous, curious, bold, analytical, focused, zen, able to plan, open-minded, receptive, adventurous, neutral, big picture, observant, great communicator. did was um, go look for like UX practitioners to interview and find out do they have the same set of traits as you guys and these are the questions that I asked actually I don't think the mic is working so I usually prefer to have it as a, a structured discussion guide um, if you're familiar with Gene UX they also use topic maps right so you can just write everything down, a bunch of post-its, and stick it on a piece of paper, and you, you can refer to it um, during your interview. Okay, so these are the people that I met in Singapore. Um, I've actually only met them once or twice during UXSG, and then I sent them an email and said like, hey, actually, would you be willing to help me? And they're all really very nice and helpful. Um, I have tried to pick people from different um, backgrounds, different experiences, um, yeah, from different levels of experience. And these are the people that I managed to interview overseas. So, one in the UK, three in Asia, and then um, one guy in Australia. Cool. Okay, and a bit about them. So, actually not many of them um, did something related. Um, a lot of them switched their careers. Nine of them have actually been in a position to hire others. And, um, yeah, experience average 7 upon 10. All right, so let's talk about user notes for a bit. Um, this is the part that I hate most in doing any user research project, but it is a pain that you must do. This is what my notes look like when I'm doing the interview session. It's like chicken scrawl. And um, if you're doing it by yourself, then you should try and develop your own shorthand and a set of symbols to say like, oh, this is a, a, a finding and this is a, a part where they found confusing and so on. And then after you finish the session and then you type up the notes. So I usually try to have them all side by side. It makes it easier to um, see the local patterns across like different people. Okay. Alright, so what differentiates a cook from a chef? This is Heston Blumenko, by the way, my favorite chef. <laughs> okay, this is what they got. So we have empathetic, curious, um, communicates well, open minded, observant. That's it. Yeah. 
Agree? I think one thing that came across was um, being able to tell stories, being able to share the vision of what the customer needs are, uh, being able to work with different kinds of stakeholders that, that seem to be the key for me coming from the research. Um, other traits, learner attitude, listening, um, being adaptable and gung ho being the bridge between customers and the business, having a why not mindset, um, other things. That's so, um, not many people said self-aware, but I think that's pretty important. Right? You have to fix yourself before you can fix others. Uh, and one guy mentioned being OCD. <laughs> yeah. So what, um, how I actually rank these traits was to put all of them in the dock, right? Then you use the A to Z to, to sort it, so you actually get clusters. And then you try to um, put the clusters into groups. And then when I've had them into groups, I, I, I assign labels to the groups. And then after that, you um, assign points to each item based on the rank that they gave. So if someone ranked it one, then I will give it 10 points. And if someone ranked it like at the bottom, it, the points, um, Correlate. Right. So based on that, then each set has a, a collective uh, sum of points, and that will help me determine the, the rankings that I have here. So I'm just going to pass this around. If you disagree with the way that I grouped it, yeah, just come and find me. <laughs> okay. So why did they pick these traits? Right. At the end of the day, what we're doing in UX is about people and for people. Um, you can learn skills, you can learn how to do things, but if you don't have the innate ability to do certain stuff, then it's going to be quite difficult. Um, besides people, we also have to look at processes, uh, be able to adapt, you know, given the different kinds of situations. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so I also came up with my own set of traits. Um, I, I work by myself at Property Guru. Uh, so I think if you are planning to work as a team of one, then this is what you need. Uh, first thing is self-aware. You need to know yourself very well because there will always be people that doubt you, uh, think whatever you're saying is like nonsense, and so on. Um, you have to be strong. It's really tough. There are days where you go home and you cry. Um, and then you just need to be able to uh, overcome that and just accept that, uh, you know, sometimes it's quite this one. Uh, being open-minded and curious. I hate those things. <laughs> um, being a rebel, not so much being a renegade, but I guess it kind of ties back to the why not mindset, right? If someone says, oh, we have to do it this way because it's how we always done it, then you have to question then why there actually has to be a better way. Um, do we really need to stick with the current way that we're doing things? Um, work well with people. Um, you have to be assertive and humble. Um, being adaptable and resourceful because you're not going to have any budget. So you have to try to do <laughs> a lot of things on the free or cheap. Uh, being independent helps because you're, there's really no one else that we can discuss things with. Um, being responsible and I wasn't very sure where to put clear thinking, so I'm just gonna chuck it at the, uh, the last bit. Okay. All right. So sh quick show of hands. You have to like people in order to be a great UX practitioner. Agree or disagree? Who's, who agrees? Right? In order to do UX, you have to like people. Okay, so who doesn't agree? Then what about the rest? <laughs> no fence sitting, yo. <laughs> right? Stick up your hand. Everyone's sticking up their hand. I'm not going to prosecute. Okay. Yes or no? Who says yes? Okay, and then no? 
Wow, so many of you. Okay. So my hypothesis is that you actually do not need to like people in order to be a good UX practitioner. And it seems like a lot of you agree with me. So actually, we can just all go home. <laughs> All right, so those who said no, uh, care to share why? Anyone? Uh, yeah. He wants to talk. Well, sometimes people just don't know what they want. So, like, see an uh, example with uh, Apple. Like, nobody, nobody thought iPhone was going to be cool, right? And then when it actually came out to use it, they were able to But what has that got to do with liking people? Alright, next better answer. <laughs> <laughs> He's my colleague, so I'm just missing the trash. <laughs> because if you force yourself to like people, all the while you're going to get pissed for on the job. And if you get okay. pissed on the job, it's very difficult for, difficult for you to focus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Even if you are too obsessed with liking people and trying to please people, then you don't have any clarity or focus in the kind of experience that you wish to give people. So if you're worried for this person or worried this person, so you're trying to like all the nuts and bolts and trying to just cater to everything and everyone. Okay. Why not have a focus? Because you're trying to you like them so much, you're trying to please everyone. Okay, please everyone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyone else? It's not about liking, it's just about understanding. Okay. Yeah, so I think we're looking on his point. As long as you understand if you try and like everybody, if you try and not like people or want to be like then it makes it very difficult to do your job, which is a big deal. Okay, so you don't have to like them, you just need to understand them. Okay. Then those who said yes, why? Why do you say yes? Yeah. You work for them. <laughs> what? Yeah. Sorry? You work for them. You work for them? Yeah. <laughs> Explain. You work for the them who's them? <laughs> okay. How does that have to do with not liking people? Because you make things easier for them on the UX. Okay. So when they're going to use what you did UX on, it's going to be easy for them. I still don't see the relation between whether you like them or not. How will you, if, if you don't like them, how will you delight them? If you don't like them, how are you to... How will you delight them? Delight them? Okay, and that's a no answer. I mean, that's. I mean, I think that's building on your yes answer, right? I mean, I don't. I don't think you do, but I think it's. You know, I don't think you need to like people, but uh, mm -hmm. but it, you know, makes it easier to. Yeah, to see what people need, to see what they need, you don't need to like them, uh, but you need to know what they love, uh, and that right. that's easier when you do like them. Just don't do the calculations. Everything works up to 
<laughs> I tried the corner trick this way.
actually went out and hunted down some people who don't like people, now referred to as PWDLP, um, who work in UX. All right, they work in UX and they don't like people. Surprise? How do you define them as PWDLP? I can't tell you because then you might go and find out their identity. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, uh, two I know personally, uh, two I, I hunted down, yeah, it's online basically. So you were self-declared PWD? Yes. Either um, yeah, in their online activities or whatnot, yeah. So these are the questions that I asked. Um, basically, because we only have 30 minutes to chat, uh, you, know, you can't really go very in-depth It. So two guys, uh, two people in Singapore and two people in America. Unfortunately, the one of the American girls kind of bailed out on me. I was very upset. <laughs> Maybe like she said she was actually very happy to do the interview, but then she kept bailing out and she said she was sick. Um, and this went on for like two weeks. I would have really loved to meet her uh, and talk to her. Alright, so um, you can see that they've actually been in UX or, or they're actually the research field for quite some time. Okay, so why do I not like people? <laughs> Everyone lies. The story they're saying about themselves uh, is just delusional, it doesn't make sense. Um, I can't say I love design because it's narcissistic, so I say that I like people. Okay, next one. Um, pedestrian taste, the shit they like or dislike is so stupid. Predictable, boring, don't stop to think. Worst of all, inconsiderate. Okay, the last one finds them tiring, conversation is mundane, rather sit in silence. But because people are insulted if you don't reciprocate, then they try to put all these labels on you and say you're antisocial and whatnot. Right? But, yeah. Yeah, and then, um, why do you work in UX? Why do you continue to remain in UX? Uh, I actually care about mentoring my team. Uh, I really enjoy solving the puzzles in UX. I'm fascinated by human behavior and the human mind. I do not see what this has got to do with not like people. Yeah. Any comments? Agree? Disagree? No? This is crazy. Like, uh, what is it? Like, I don't like it, but I mean, it's like it's my job, pays my rent, do something else. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, especially for you, person, right? Should be a bit minded or thing like this. I'm just like, whoa, what are you like? It's like, I'm working in the bank, it's a job, very far away. You can just replace me with something else. Yeah, and yet he still works in UX because he likes yeah. the puzzle it seems part. Like it's people like me who's been in the job like at least for four years, right? I think it's like, what is every job? Yeah, but it's still a bank, right? Yeah. It's a job, the pay is right. It's a bank. Yeah. It's a big bank. If you look at it the other way, are we all not working in just a job, right? We don't live <laughs> our jobs. 24 hours a day. So how is what he says any different? Right. Uh, okay, then I post this hypothesis to them. Uh, it's it's really not necessary to, to like people. It's more important if they enjoy solving problems, they have a healthy self-esteem, and they are intrinsically motivated to do this for the customer rather than because of like awards and accolades and so on. Um, the doctor can identify symptoms without actually caring for the patient, right? Because it's all data, you just look out for the, the patterns and then you tie it back to what you knew before and then you design something that would be similar. It's more important to be objective. UX is full objective. 
the last person basically saying that you don't have to like people, you just have to appreciate them. Yeah. Doesn't mean that I have to like spending time with them. You guys are really quiet. I guess you all agree with it. Okay, question then. So yeah. the top two, right, are yeah. both goal-oriented problem solvers, okay. which is good. Okay. Uh, but I mean, how do you practice your craft then? Do you, are you a hill climber? Are you optimizing towards a certain goal? Are you optimizing for conversion rate? Is that, you know, is that your measure? Or are you thinking about, again, the converse, you know, how do we delight our users if we delight them, they'll keep coming back? Um, what one of these two uh, people said, it's like playing Super Mario. <laughs> Right? In Super Mario, you have to get from point A all the way to point B, and in between there's a bunch of shit that you have to avoid. And that's basically how he's seeing each UX project. It's like a game, and there's all these different um, constraints and challenges, and then how can I apply my skills, and then actually make this better for, for the customer. Better for the customer, or better for reaching the goal? Well, you know, there's lots of evil kind of UX, right, which is converts massively, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, doesn't make it nice, so. Yeah. But he, uh, he does, um, like, actually testing and stuff. So oh, no, I, I think it's about the testing, but then, like, if you test, you know, how do you, you know, how is your experience, or you just go, check the numbers, they don't lie. Numbers are up, top of the right. Numbers and what's that? Numbers are, like, uh, you know, conversion rate raised, I mean, so we implemented this change, we had a conversion rate of 1.5%, we raised it to 5%, uh, that's going to be X million dollars, job done, half dead. Right? Doesn't right. mean, you know, that's a good, you know, that's job well done, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean you are empathetic or why it's working, just that it is, you know, we removed some barriers, great stuff. Um, we don't need to necessarily like people to do that. That's true, but then wouldn't you say that being able to do that is also part of what the problem was? No, no I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing both sides to, yeah. to the, yeah. and I'm, I'm just wondering if the empathetic, the people who say, I feel like people have to have empathy, will use a different toolkit than the people who say, uh, don't like people. Right. Because they might just go back to the numbers. Go back to the numbers and, and, and just very stuff. analytically based and very kind of goal oriented. I'm not saying that's wrong, but uh, but it's just two you know two different ways to reach yeah. a to reach a goal. I can't answer that. If I get a chance to talk to this person again, I'll let you know. Okay. So, do you think that after hearing from all these um, different groups of people? The hypothesis is actually feasible. Yes? No? Like. Maybe! <laughs> maybe? Maybe not. Yeah. yeah. You didn't stop it for answering me. That's true. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to uh, introduce this guy to you. His name is Bronislaw Malinowski. Right, he's the founder of social anthropology, he's British, and he did this, um, his first study was to go to this island for three years, and then basically studied the life there. And his study has been praised for being very um, neutral, um, neutral in one of the traits. All right? But when he died, his wife discovered his secret diaries. <laughs> and his secret diaries actually Talk about hate towards these islanders, right? They are like brutes. I hate them, but yet I lust after them, uh, and, and all kinds of things. So the fact that he was actually able to be this way and yet come up with a study that was very neutral ground, I think, says quite a lot. Um, He has said that the diaries are actually his own private conversation and that allows him to kind of um, develop his, his um, character and maybe th that was his own way of ironing out his thoughts. Right? But the fact remains that 
he actually doesn't really like the people that he studied. Um, so I just have a couple of closing thoughts. Um, liking people is a choice. It doesn't uh, mean that they can't understand human behavior. And it doesn't mean that they can't understand how to solve people's problems. Um, one of the practitioners that I interviewed said that it could be good because they see all the shortcomings in um, the world and then they have a stronger passion to make it better. Uh, it's more important for the practitioner to be interested in people rather than liking people, being objective and balancing uh, business needs. Like what um, you said, right? If you really like people, you might just go all the, the other way. Um, multiple roles. Like, we all have different roles that we play, right? At work, we're a certain role. When we go home, we're a different role. Um, how is it any less genuine if we happen to not like people? Uh, one of the practitioners that I was talking to mentioned this. Like, usually, when people think of like identity, we see a tree, right? And you only ever have like one core identity. But actually, we could be more like uh, rhizomes or ginger. So ginger grows in the ground, and it's like bulbs connected to bulbs connected to bulbs, right? And at different points in your life, certain um, connections between the bulbs will be stronger, and then sometimes the connections may break off. But and then depending on where your life takes you, those connections might resurface again. Okay, so. It doesn't mean that because we don't like people, we are not able to do all these other things. And lastly, if being open-minded is a top trait, then um, shouldn't we be open-minded about having different kinds of personalities and minds in this field? Yeah. Yes? Okay, that you don't have to let people know. <laughs> Pedro, I can see you. Yeah, show hands. So, yes, you have to let people in order to be great UX. <laughs> really? No? I see some people shaking their heads. Why? <laughs> Yes, no, you guys are really shy. I'm gonna drink more beer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it should be us drinking beer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, BYO was good. Alright. So, here are some research tips. Um, I don't think there's anything new from what you can find out there, but um, yes. So, when you have your discussion guide or your topic map, don't try to follow it exactly how you plan because depending on what the other person says, you will have to jump the questions very quickly and then bring them back to what you intended to ask before. Uh, whether you use a guide or a topic map, just choose something that's comfortable for you. Um, when you're asking questions, so like never throw, never explain how things work. If the participant is asking you what do you mean, you ask them back what do you think it means. Okay. Um, what does this button do? What do you think the button does? And so on. And then five W's and one H, like people in journalism will probably be familiar. Like who, what, where, when, and what, where, when, why, why and how. Yeah? Uh, I do all my user research alone because I'm alone. Um, but if you can, try to pair up with someone so that you can type the notes. If you're typing, don't censor. Um, just type whatever, uh, whatever the person is saying, right? Type first, think later. Your, your job is to record everything that the, the person is saying. If you are by yourself, um, just try and develop your own shorthand and write very fast. Uh, and then also after each session, just write down uh, the top level things. Because these things will help you to identify patterns much quicker uh, later on. Interview notes I've covered, um, synthesizing, so just look for patterns, don't take things at face value based on what they say. Um, keep in mind culture, so like something um, that's popular in Singapore may not be in Malaysia or in Indonesia. 
Okay, and then um, just <coughs> prepare a clear uh, presentation. For audio? Don't expect to record audio? Yeah. Because of people or because of resource constraints? Or it could be know? both. Like maybe your phone battery died or the person is not comfortable being recorded. So don't go in there relying on being able to record. Um, okay, so in Asia, which is something that I learned when I joined Property Guru, there's this thing called retrospective, which happens every two weeks, I think, uh, after a sprint. So this is what um, my hours are like working on this um, whole study. And then there's also this other thing called the good, the bad, and the ugly. So the good is that the UX community is really helpful. Yay! <laughs> uh, I, I learned a lot of new stuff which I'm still trying to digest, like neurobiology and. Yeah, I, I don't know um, I, So, like for bad, I think maybe I tried to interview too many people in that short amount of time um, and a bit too focused on quality over conversation. Um, I actually found it quite uncomfortable talking to the people who don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> one was quite intimidating, and the other one, like, I felt like punching his face. <laughs> um, yeah, and then of course the, the the girl didn't show up. And then trying to do this whole thing on my Mac and on 11 inch screen is like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so thanks, thanks to everyone listed here. Uh, couldn't have done it without you. I'd also like to dedicate this slide to the three women who have um, played a very big role in my life. Um, the end.
not any more egoistical <laughs> than the other practitioners. I think there were some parts in the interview where they said that UX is uh, was goal objective. <laughs> You solve things by extending certain data points uh, and come to that conclusion. But on your own personal uh, approach to resolving UX, do you see it as such as well? Can you repeat the question? Sorry. No. Um, so he said that earlier on someone mentioned that like UX is goal, objective. Um, and do I actually see it as the same way, right? Yeah. Right, so 